Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to test for other mods without requiring the mod to be installed. There are some foundational things that you probably should know about these particular blocks and how to use them and, you know, just general uh, troubleshooting, but uh, it's completely optional if you want to do it or not. Now, uh, basically it's I'm going to be covering the procedure way and then I'm going to be demonstrating with one of my mods. If I go into the work workspace folder and go to the run folder, I've uh, exported the mod for um, uh, the actual workspace. So it's a version of it that will work with M creator uh, that could be explained in an entire different video but for now just know that it's like a different uh, version it's not an actual jar it's like a development version of that jar there's a way to export and everything but we'll cover that in the future um let's go to our procedure and we'll see what i have set up here so first off i have the a if statement now when you're working with if statements when you're testing for things and maybe adding new mechanics and stuff like that maybe you would want to consider adding an else statement or an else if statement the reason being is if the mod does not exist you might still want some particular mechanics to replace the uh, particular thing if it's installed in this case we probably don't need to do that because we're just testing if the block exists in that particular mod and we're going to be dropping uh, regular Minecraft art from it after we remove it and cancel the event. So basically what's going on here is we're going to run a global trigger. Uh, is a block is broken. Now you can basically run this from any particular trigger. The only thing that we really need to take in consideration is these two blocks right here for testing for from that other mod. Now I'll show you where those are in just a second. But uh, the important thing is, this is your registry name for that mod. Uh, if you don't know what it is, we, we can go in game quickly and I'll, I'll show you what it would look like. So in game, what you would want to do is go to the mods folder and then you would basically see the uh, particular uh, mods that are installed. So in, case, in this case, we have Tales of Biomes and the mod ID is basically what we want to look at. So it's uh, tail underscore of underscore biomes. Now, if you have the mod yourself and you basically set it up, you can actually find that in your workspace settings. And then it would be uh, the mod ID right here, which you would want to basically use for the registry. So basically, the mod ID is basically what you're going to be putting in that particular one. The registry of the block and stuff is going to be basically what you're going to be testing for. So in this case, you would need the mod namespace, which is the same thing as your mod ID, and then the registry for the dirt. Now you can see this in the F3 screen for when you um, have the advanced tooltips. Uh, I believe it's like F3 plus H that will give you the advanced tooltips. It'll give you the actual registry information and all that other stuff. Uh, another option would be to look at the block. Um, it should give you the information you would need from that particular thing. But in most cases, you can just use the F3H keybind to basically display additional information about the item, the mod register the mod ID and the registry of that particular item. So that's basically how you do it through that. Now let's basically cover what's going on here. So the first thing is we have two and statements, which give us three options for things. So the first thing that we're testing for is if it's on server side, this is probably not required for this particular thing. It's probably gonna be running on server side only. So it's basically saying that it says it's cancelable so we can use this particular block. Uh, the other thing is we're testing if the mod is installed. So if it is loaded, which means if the mod is loaded in this particular game, we want to basically run this procedure. The other thing that we need to do is we need to actually test for a block in the game. So I've used this provided block state of same as block, which is the used to be the equal sign in older videos. Now it's with words. And then I'm testing for convert registry name, and then I'm giving it the namespace of the mod, the block called dirt. So I have a block in this particular um, mod called dirt. And then we're going to say uh, to block or error if conversion fails. So basically if the block is broken, 
Um, in Tales of Biomes, if we break that particular block, it's going to cancel the event, which means it's not going to break the block through that method, which means it's not going to drop anything. The next thing it's going to do is basically replace that block and keep that block there. We want to remove the block, which I am basically just removing so it has no drop. And then I'm going to spawn a gem, which I am setting the Minecraft dirt. And then I'm just centering the location for the drop location. And that's basically it. Now we can go into where to find these particular blocks. So the block is the mod with ID and then the string and then loaded. You can find that under the advanced tab. If you scroll down, it will be right around this level and you'll be able to set up the mod um, namespace for that particular thing. Remember that it needs to be exactly the same as the mod. So make sure that it's the exact same. Uh, this is a logic value. So if it's true or false, um, if it, well, if it's false, it will not not run the script if it is true which means it is loaded then it will do the script so in some cases what you would want to do is you would want to basically add something else so like an else statement and you might want to check if the mod is loaded do something if it is and then if it not then have a fallback procedure that will do something for uh, within your mod for specific mechanics so you don't fully depend on that particular mod for actually doing it. Another option would be to do something in your own mod using a condition. In some cases you might need to do that. Uh, for example, if you were to testing, testing for the block like this, uh, you might need to still test for something in your own mod block and you would basically set the uh, block type or something like that as an additional condition for a later script. So that's kind of a rough idea of how you could basically work with this particular block to basically run it. Now you would probably want to make sure that the mod um, that you're testing for is run before any other thing in your mod. This would allow you to give the mod itself other mods priority for basically running the script and have your mod have a fallback if there is something. Uh, the other block here is uh, convert registry name uh, registry name to block or error if conversion fails. That can be found under your block. Uh, I believe it's data and block procedures data. And then if you scroll down, there should be a convert registry name. And then it's right down at the bottom here. So that was that one. And there should be one for items as well. If we go to items, data, and scroll down a bit, we should see that there is a registry name one right here for registry as well. And I th think there might be one for entities as well. So if we scroll down, uh, we might be able to find one. I'm not sure if there is one for entities. There might be. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to see if there is one. There might not be one for that. There's tags. Uh, you could still use that as a tag as well if you needed to. Um, Okay, actions maybe, probably won't be under actions. Um, yeah, so I don't think there's one for entities specifically. So it's just items and blocks as far as I know. So those are the only two things that you'll have for that particular one. Um, I don't think there's any other things like worlds or anything like that for registries. So you'll have to make do with uh, the blocks and items for now. They might add it in the future if it's possible, but uh, that's basically what you would end up testing. Now let's just quickly go into game and just test this so you can see basically that it works. So again, if uh, you want to get the block registry name, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and press F3 while you're in your player mode and then H, and then it will toggle between uh, advanced tooltips um, hidden, which by default, this is basically what it would look like. So you would have your uh, the name of the block, the, the name of the mod, and then nothing after that. If we press F3H again, we can see that tooltips are shown, and then it will give us the actual registry of, or the mod namespace, and then the registry of that block. So as you can see, this is particular the dirt from the mod. So if we go ahead and break this, 
you can see it drops the Minecraft dirt rather than the dirt itself. By default, um, it would normally drop the block itself. Well, it probably wouldn't drop at all because we're in creative mode, but in survival mode it would. So, uh, as you can see, this basically works because the mod is installed and stuff like that. Same script as I showed before, nothing different. And if we right click on it, it selects the item. So, there you go. That's basically it. Um, just a quick uh, thing that I got. Uh, suggested uh, for to cover in the comments so I thought I would quickly show that and show how it works and stuff like that but uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out